On behalf of the Board of Directors and staff of the Caribbean Export Development Agency, I extend a warm welcome to each of you as we commence the second Caribbean Exporters Colloquium. The hosting of this event during Caribbean Export Week underscores the agency's firm belief and commitment to fostering opportunities for regional public-private public dialogue. These address pertinent issues relating to trade and export development. In 2013, the agency hosted the inaugural colloquium to review the recommendations emanating from the Time for Action report prepared by the West Indian Commission for the CARICOM Heads of Government in 1992, that's 22 years ago. Over the two days, the attendees assessed not only the Time for Action report, but also analyzed the region's export performance, listened to the private sector's experiences and concerns, discussed the status of private sector advocacy, and examined a new framework for export development in the region. Arising from that gathering, Caribbean Export took on board the recommendations made and incorporated them into our existing work program, as well as this year's agenda. There are several sessions that have been specifically created to ensure that the critical issues raised by the private sector and policymakers last year are brought to the table over the next two days. It is my sincere hope that the discussions and exchange of ideas will bring the region closer to the point of strengthening its economic position and enabling the private sector to play a pivotal role in economic development. The theme this year is building economic resilience in the Caribbean. And we thought it apt to focus on a number of areas that could help foster a more resilient Caribbean. Before I go any further, it is important to define the term economic resilience and why we felt the need for this to be a priority for our governments, our private sector, and the various stakeholders that are engaged in regional development. According to Professor Lino Briguglio, the director of the Institute for Islands and Small States at the University of Malta, economic resilience can be defined as a country's ability to cope with external shocks. As most of our countries are small island developing states, the Caribbean region is highly prone and exposed to external shocks, which of course impact the private sector and economic development more largely. As a region, we're still trying to recover from the global recession that started six years ago. In some CARIFORUM states, unemployment levels are as high as 20%, and in others, the debt to GDP ratio are such that IMF programs have become the order of the day. While our governments have been implementing a number of measures to stabilize our economies, the private sector has been severely impacted. There's therefore an urgent need to support the private sector in mitigating the negative effects of the crisis, while also strengthening their internal capacity to export. The situation varies little from country to country, and as a regional agency, it behoves us to organize this regional gathering to examine the way forward in building economic resilience in the Caribbean. So what can we do as policymakers, the private sector and donors to build resilience in the Caribbean? Economists recommend a number of measures that can be put in place to reduce vulnerability to shocks. Exports and export diversification rank highly among these measures. And as you will notice from the agenda, the first session at this year's colloquium intends to examine the region's export performance. What has been the export performance of key regional sectors and how does this performance compare globally? What will be presented during the first session is the region's export card, report card, which highlights an assessment of the performance of trade and exports. Will the CARIFORUM region receive a passing grade? We'll soon find out as we delve into this session. Caribbean export work also allows us to closely interact with the regional private sector. And because of this, we're able to design projects and programs to help them overcome the challenges that they encounter while exporting. During last year's co colloquium, we held the first meeting of our private sector advisory group, which comprises reputable business persons from across the Caribbean, so that we could better understand their needs and allow their insights to influence the strategic direction of the agency. Yesterday, we again were fortunate enough to host a meeting with this group, and today some of the representatives will form a part of the second panel to share their perspectives on the key issues affecting Caribbean private sector competitiveness. This discussion will focus on the adjustments that need to be made in order to foster an environment for increasing export competitiveness. One means by which we can increase export competitiveness is by ensuring that the private sector has the necessary platforms for engaging policymakers directly so that their voice is incorporated into the very policy decisions that affect them. Discussion and feedback from last year's attendees indicated the need for greater levels of private sector advocacy 
In light of this need, Caribbean Export commissioned a study entitled CARICOM Stroke CARI Forum Public Private Sector Dialogue, a roadmap for re-engagement, which will be shared and discussed in one of this afternoon's sessions. For increased public-private dialogue, we believe that the private sector would be able to play a greater role in building economic resilience. And I want to just take this opportunity to recognize uh, Mr. Jimmy Moss Solomon, well, James, sorry, but we all know him as Jimmy, uh, who is one of the outstanding members of our region. His knowledge of the regional private sector is without compare, and I, I look forward to hearing from him on re-engaging the private sector in the region's economic development. To build economic resilience, the region must also consider alternative ways of contributing to GDP. There are economic gains to be made through copyright and other forms of intellectual property right here in our own backyards. Last year, the agency also hosted a two-day brand development and packaging workshop webinar for 104 firms across 13 CARI Forum countries. Following the workshop, firms were invited to apply to a special grant facility to help them rebrand and repackage their products for export markets, particularly the European market. Brand 42, the company selected to work with the firms, has extensive experience working with major brands such as CNN and Johnny Walker, and we're pleased to have them present on the panel later. Welcome, Adj, thank you for coming. Apart from not fully exploiting IP rights and branding, have we as a region adequately utilized innovation to boost economic performance and export competitiveness? In academia, there's substantial evidence which shows that SMEs contribute to the innovation system by introducing new products and adapting existing products to the needs of consumers. Caribbean countries are increasingly recognizing the role of innovation as a catalyst for economic development. To assist the region, Caribbean Export formed the Regional Innovation Advisory Group with the purpose of functioning as a think tank for matters related to innovation, technology transfer, sharing of best practices, and guiding the development of a regional innovation strategic plan and implementation throughout the region. One of the key determinants in development and growth of SMEs, of course, is access to finance. Yet in most Caribbean countries, many firms are constrained in their growth and expansion due to a lack of financial capital. Within the Caribbean, local financial systems are often unable to adequately cater to the needs of SMEs and at times the right mix of financing. At the same time, banks in the Caribbean region are often hampered in supporting SMEs due to their lack of firm relevant information, such as their financial history, credit worthiness, et cetera. We are therefore looking at non-traditional sources of funding and seeing how we can promote those. And this will be further explored tomorrow as we discuss issues related to access to finance and non-traditional platforms. Economists have also indicated that the region can build economic resilience by reducing dependence on imported energy products. Studies on the energy sector indicate that petroleum products are the island's main source of energy with 90% of commercial energy supplies imported into the region. I know Minister Boyce considers this a major issue and one that we need to address without delay. However, let me say it's not all doom and gloom for the region when we speak about energy. Solar and geothermal energy opportunities are already being exploited in several countries. Some Caribbean firms, including one of our very own beneficiaries, Hotel Mockingbird, have already successfully reduced their electricity bills and will share their experiences in the penultimate panel. As a region, we need to keep pursuing renewable energy solutions to increase our energy security and also ensure environmental and economic sustainability. The idea, finally, of a logistics hub for the region and its positioning. This, of course, is a ticklish issue because every country feels that they should be the logistics hub. However, <laughs> it, there's no doubt that it will be an interesting panel. And uh, the Caribbean and the new global logistics and shipping ecosystem. With the expansion of the Panama Canal, this will allow larger container vessels and more vessels per day to pass through, which could reduce shipping costs and have significant impact on global trade and Caribbean ports. It is anticipated that large volumes of cargo will be unloaded onto smaller ships at various hubs before being shipped to their final destination. Herein lies the opportunity to generate additional revenues for the Caribbean. At the conclusion of the colloquium, it is our intention to offer the outline of a way forward in building economic resilience in the Caribbean based on the ideas and recommendations that will emerge from the discussions. We do hope that you will engage fully so that your contributions can affect the region's trajectory. 
We're pleased with the high caliber of speakers that we have lined up, and we're confident that their views will help stimulate thought-provoking discussions. Building economic resilience in the Caribbean, which has 15 member states in CARIFORUM alone and several others in the French Caribbean, outermost regions, and overseas countries and territories, seems like a formidable task. But I will leave you with the words of the late, great Nelson Mandela. It always seems impossible until it's done. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you.